And why don't we just don't waste any time? We're going to get him off because he's got another interview coming up in a couple of minutes. But let's spend a little time. I call him the grandfather of recruiting. When you talk about he's been in it longer than anybody. Tom Lemming, LemmingReport.com. Tom, I hope you're having a great day. Merry Christmas from all of us here in T-Town. Same to you, Ryan. Merry Christmas. Let's spend a little bit of time here as we look at Alabama's 22 signees. Uh, Bryce Young, Drew Sanders seems to be, Chris Braswell seems to be the headliners. Uh, kind of give us your opinion on those big three. Well, Bryce Young's my number two overall player in the country next to uh, DJ uh, Weungalala, uh, the quarterback from Bosco. Bryce is from uh, modern day, and I've seen both of them since their freshman year. I think they're just two uh, uh, – DJ is going to take Trevor Lawrence's place. And I think uh, Bryce, although Bryce has got more competition with, with, uh, with Paul and um, Tio to his brother. So, but Bryce is sort of a Kyler Murray type quarterback size wise, arm strength wise, speed wise, athletic ability wise. So he's the real deal. And it's a major catch for you, uh, you know, because normally uh, quarterbacks from modern day go to USC, including, uh, Matt Leinert uh, and um, Matt Barkley and uh, JT Daniels. But uh, USC is struggling a little bit, and I think Bryce wanted to jump ship. Let me, let me go to the Bryce Young. Do you think that he needs to add some weight? He will naturally, but he's not a real big guy. He's about 5'11", so I don't know how much he could add. But he'll be over 200 pounds within a year or two anyway, so I don't know if he's you know, he'll, it'll come naturally with him. He's got such great eye. He'll, he's almost exact same size Kyler Murray was coming out of uh, Allen High School in Texas. So, uh, and like I said, he's got similar stats, athletic ability, and everything else. I think you could, he reminds me a lot of Kyler Murray. Tom, what do you think about Drew Sanders out of Denton, Texas? I saw Drew each of the past couple of years. He was at two different high schools, and uh, when he was first committed to Oklahoma is when I actually ran into him a couple of years ago. He was a quarterback linebacker. And, you know, he's actually good enough to play quarterback, but he's a better linebacker, possibly could even grow into a defensive end. Uh, a terrific all-around athlete. I really liked uh, Drew a lot. And, you know, he's a five-star player, as is Bryce Young, as is um, Chris Braswell, whose um, coach is a real good friend of mine, Jeff Poggi. So I'm always at St. Francis. Uh, before that, Biff had gone was from Gilman High School in Baltimore. That's where all the top players were going. Now, all of them are in Francis. They've turned it into a national power. So there's going to be more players from St. Francis heading to Alabama because Biff is very close to two coaches, Nick Saban and Jim Harbaugh. So I think Alabama and Michigan will be splitting the – an awful lot of them. Tom, when you look across the country, is there one position that the world is short of when you talk about the country? And, and, and is there is there one position that there's just not enough to go around? You know, when we're talking nationally, I, I, you know, there's players at every single position. The toughest ones to fill are usually true corners, guys that have length, you know, quick twitch athletic ability, loose hips, that could run backwards as fast as guys run forward. They're tough to find, as is as our um, pass-rushing defensive end. So you can never have enough of those guys. Braswell's one of them, so they did get him. And um, most schools, though, have trouble bringing in guys like Braswell. Alabama seems to bring in a couple every year, so they, and so does Clemson. But most of the other schools, there aren't enough to go around. So most schools will uh, try to grow outside linebackers and make them defensive ends or even switch over tight ends, guys that have athletic ability. But they're awfully tough to find. Tom, as you look in, in Jace McClellan, Alito, Texas, uh, what do you see in him? Because he was two-year commitment to Oklahoma and flipped to Alabama late yesterday, one of the latest signees around 5.30 local time here uh, in the Tuscaloosa time zone. He's another ball player with five-star ability, really. When I, I seen him as a sophomore, he was the sophomore of the year for the state of Texas when he came out of Alito. And um, he plays against great competition there in the Metroplex area. And really was impressed with him. And his coach, who's been around a long time, told me that it might be the best running back schools ever produced. So he's a big time back. And uh, one of the two best running backs in Texas, uh, the other one coming from North Shore High School, is still uncommitted. But he uh, he's the real deal. He'll be playing as a freshman. He's got that kind of ability. 
Tom, are you seeing players play earlier across college football? It just seems that that's the trend, that it doesn't take these players as long of a time to make a transition. Is that just something I'm looking at, or is that is that truly happening across college football? I think, I think it's across every major sport, hockey, basketball, NBA, uh, Major League Baseball. You've seen a lot younger guys playing a lot quicker than they did uh, several years ago. But I think it's just that better training. Ball players are really zeroing in on one sport. In the old days, which would be 30 years ago, ball players played multiple sports all the time. Nowadays, a lot of the football players are just zeroing in on working out, you know, and film study and practicing for football, and not playing baseball, basketball, or other sports. And I think that's the reason why these guys seem to be ahead of where your players were about 30 years ago. Tom, when you look around the SEC, did anybody outside of Alabama do something that grabbed your attention? Almost the entire com- conference. That's a, I mean, uh, Georgia, Texas A&M, Florida, LSU all had great years. Even, you know, it's funny was um, I, and Auburn had a great year. And I thought uh, Kentucky and Mississippi State both did pretty good. But they're at the bottom of the conference because the conference is so good. And looking way up would be Vanderbilt, Missouri, and Arkansas. They were they're way behind, so they got up. Long, long way to go to catch up, and I doubt if any of those three catch up in the next in this foreseeable future. Tom LSU lost some big guys late. Maybe not the class that we thought they were going to finish with. What was your thoughts of LSU? No, I still like their class. So they got some big guys late, also. The Webb kid, Philip Webb, the big linebacker out of Georgia's big time ball player, the outstanding tackle from South Florida. So kind of averages out. They would love to have kept everyone, but they lost a real good DB to Maryland that he was only, uh, he grew up in DC. So he grew up very close to the university of Maryland, about only a couple of miles away. So I could see that possibly happening, but overall LSU did a real good job. They wound up with a very good class. Tom, has Nick Saban changed the way that he recruits? You, you've been evaluating him. You called him the greatest recruiter the sport's ever seen several years ago on the show, and I'm sure you're sticking by that. But did we see Nick Saban adjusting? Anything he's changing the way that he's doing it because he continues to maintain at the top there? Uh, Clemson got him by the number one class, but uh, overall Nick Saban finishing with that number two class, number one in the SEC. Yeah, he has, you, you got to adjust in recruiting just to stay, keep pace with these young guys that their minds change every few years, and you got to stay up with the times and know exactly what's going on. And Nick Saban does. He's got his ear to the ground, and he knows what he's doing. He still is, like you say, I've been doing it 41 years. He's the best recruiter I've ever seen. And if he had a name at top five, he'd be number one. And the other four would be Mac Brown, Phil Fulmer, uh, Pete Farrell, and Urban Meyer uh, over the past 41 years. Those five, I thought, were the best recruiters I'd seen on a consistent basis. But no one really comes close to Saban. Dabo Sweeney's still young. He could possibly get there someday, but he's got a long way to go. I always find it intriguing uh, on your website as you look at it, Tom Lemming or prepfootball.com. Tom Lemming, 41-year veteran of covering recruiting. He travels 50,000 miles from December through June. So what's happening right now? Are you going back to Chicago for Christmas or are I'm you out visiting? Driving, I'm driving 1,000 miles today from uh, 950, really, from New York City because we filmed uh, our shows on CBS on 57th Street in Manhattan. So you're driving back home today. Morning. So it'll be it's about a 14-hour drive. So I, I left early in the morning in Manhattan, which is a good time to leave so you can avoid traffic. So I'm on Interstate 90 now in Ohio and heading home. Tom, what do you what do you do as you spend that much time in a vehicle, man? I mean, I mean, obviously radio interviews because if you follow Tom Lemming, LemmingReport.com, uh, Lemming Re- FootballReport.com, and Lemming Report on the Twitter account, you do a lot of radio interviews. But I mean, how do you how do you spend that much time in a vehicle? And what do you do? Yeah, well, today you're right. I'm doing mainly radio shows as I drive, which takes away a lot of the time. You know, you don't, sure. you don't get too bored. But then I'll listen to books on tape, and uh, I have serious radio. So during the weekend, you can get a lot of games on there. And most of the other time, you listen to uh, uh, whatever's on, you know, uh, Radio Classics or Howard Stern or uh, Joel Olstein. You listen to every, anything. They've got 300 channels, so it's easy to find something you, of interest. Hey, Tom, listen, thank you again for making us part of your afternoon. Safe trip back to Chicago at home. Enjoy the wonderful Christmas time, and we'll catch up with you very, very soon. Thank you, Tom, for being a part of the show, sir. You're welcome. Take care.